Um, but you know when you're diving down, you get that really, really good rendition of who shall not be returning. Yeah, the thing um, you always bring up. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the official, unofficial Sea of Thieves podcast, a podcast dedicated to Sea of Thieves and other rare games, but mainly Sea of Thieves. And unlike the official podcast, we actually uh, upload frequently. Uh, and we have an incredible episode today because we are discussing A Pirate's Life. It's the latest set of five tall tales that form one big epic story. Uh, these new tall tales introduce new areas, new enemies, and a heap of lore to keep us happy till at least season four. Uh, there's actually so much to discuss that we're only focusing on the first two new Tall Tales in this episode. I mean, we want to give those Tall Tales the attention they deserve, and we also want to discuss as much of the lore as possible. It is a lot to take in, and hopefully at the end of this podcast, everything will make a lot more sense to you. And am I able to do this all alone? No, of course not. Today's guest is also a YouTuber who can't get enough of the Sea of Thieves lore. Hey again, guys, it's a shiny ray. I'm a Sea of Thieves YouTuber and pretty regular guest at this point, so I expect to be paid now. Well, if you accept bananas, it should all be good. Uh, and yeah, you are a regular now. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm, I'm honoured. Um, some might even call me maybe a co-host in the future. We'll see how that goes. Well, don't get too excited. <clears throat> so <I'll> be... <laughs> inviting myself to be the co-host on your podcast. Oh, well, it's it's better than other guests, too. Anyways, before we dive into this uh, episode, I want to make clear that uh, obviously there will be a lot of spoilers. Uh, the focus is on the first two Tall Tales, but that doesn't mean we want to discuss other stuff as well. Uh, like the side quest of the first Tall Tale, we probably will discuss some lore from the novels, uh, and obviously mention the other Tall Tales. So yeah, if you complain about spoilers, I will just make a timestamp, and I'll, I'll link the timestamp to, to this disclaimer, so you've been warned. Um, I also asked the members of my Discord if they had any specific questions about these tall tales that they would have liked answered, uh, and they did, so we will discuss those as well. And if you'd like to give your input yourself to this podcast episode, or just want to hang out with me and the crew, uh, please join the Salty Hippo Discord. Uh, I'll make sure there's a link in the description, and you just click on it, and, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's dive into the very first tall tale, which is called A Pirate's Life. Uh, I will give a quick summary, and after that we'll uh, discuss everything bit by bit, while also trying to answer the questions from the community. So, A Pirate's Life, Tall Tale. Um, it begins at the Castaway Camp. It's a new uh, new area where all the new Tall Tales begin. Uh, a Castaway there, who, who is a bit mysterious, uh, but she gives us the quest. Uh, she warns of a new threat to the way of life, the, the way of life of the Sea of Thieves. Uh, but we do need help from a certain pirate. And to do that, we need to infiltrate the, um, the ship of the damned, because he is there. Um, so the castaway opens portal, we sail to the uh, Sea of the Damned, we arrive at a beautiful new location, do some light puzzles, puzzle solving, while also getting a little bit of a story in the, uh, in the cave area over there. After the cave, you arrive at Sailor's Grave, which is a little town. Uh, we enlist the help of the cursed captain there to light the beacon, in, so the ship of the damned will... Uh, uh, we'll sail to the location. We sneak on that ship. We use our special ghost flame to make the uh, roster explode. And there we rescue the prisoner, who is actually Jack Sparrow. Uh, after that, we get attacked by Davy Jones and we kind of defeat him or and at least make him go away. Uh, but Jack falls overboard, leaving us with nothing. And that's about the entire Tall Tale. Um, that's correct, right? Or did I miss any uh, major, uh, major events? I think you got pretty much it. Um, I, I can't think of anything you missed, to be honest. I think that's pretty spot on. All right, cool. Well, that's what you get when you write down a script. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great tall tale. Um, it's a great introduction. It's pretty long, actually. You can rush through it. Um, but if you take your time, it's uh, certainly uh, certainly very atmospheric. And I, I actually really enjoyed my time with the first tall tale. But obviously, there's a lot of lore to discuss, so let's go over these questions. And the first one is, uh, some people might still be wondering, how did uh, Jack Sparrow and David Jones get to the Sea of Thieves? So, how did they get to the Sea of Thieves? So, it looks like 
um, well, from from what we understand is that Jack stole that lockbox treasure, and we don't really have a, a name for it other than the fact that it's the greatest pirate treasure to ever exist. Um, and it can let you tra- travel through to different worlds, so similar to how we do the portals. Um, how Jack ended up in the Sea of Thieves, um, or chose the Sea of Thieves, we'll, we'll sort of discuss later on. Um, but that's that's the way he did it. Um, and I guess Davy Jones followed him through unknown means. We're not really explained how. Um, I guess that's maybe hinted on in a later tall tale, but we don't have any like concrete answers on how Davy Jones managed to follow him. Yeah, the way the way I experienced this, it it was that um, the the you know that that little box uh, allows people to travel to different horizons, uh, and there's actually two of them. Um, and Davy Jones uh, owned both of them. Jack Sparrow saw one, and I think Davy Jones was just angry and just followed him uh, to get his uh, treasure back. That's the way I read it. But we'd never see two of the lockboxes, do we? No, we don't. But I think it is hinted at at the first alt tale that uh, that there are two. I think that's that's a that's a fair assumption that I I might have missed that sort of implication. Yeah, let's uh, we can play it again and then we'll know for sure. Um, <laughs> So we know about Jack, right? So he used the box, but how did the castaway get to the Sea of Thieves? Um, can I just go ahead and spoil it because we know exactly why she, well, yeah. how she's got there. We want well, definitive answers in this podcast. That's the reason oh, why people are listening. Oh well, it's Calypso, and um, if you're not a, if you don't know Pirates of the Caribbean lore and you're just a fan of Sea of Thieves, Calypso is a quote unquote heathen god. Um, she's a pagan god of the, or sorry, goddess of the sea, um, and the castaway is not her human form. It's actually Calypso itself, uh, or herself. Um, and she would have got to the Sea of Thieves because she's a goddess. She doesn't really... She, she doesn't really... Um, what's the word? Have to abide by the uh, the laws of physics like us mere mortals. So that's how she ended up in the Sea of Thieves. Yeah, it's interesting because at the fifth tall tale, you get a, a tall tale book and you you read a line. I'm not sure what the line is exactly, but that she was a bit weakened and that she needed to um, collect her powers again now that she's in another world. So she just needs to recuperate from her own journey. So it's it's cool. nice. It's nice to see that um, even though they're sort of implementing canon from other other universes, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, they're not just bringing them in and making them absolutely OP and dwarf the sort of the rules we have of the Sea of Thieves. Yeah, definitely. No, they integrated it, it very well, uh, which also leads to the the next question because uh, she is actually the one opening the portals to the Sea of the Damned. But how was she able to do that? Uh, I guess I guess it's explained just by the, by the fact she's a magical being. Um, <laughs> even though the Sea of Thieves is not necessarily her world, she still has some sort of dominion over the sea. Um, mm. And if you obviously this spoils a few bits from the uh, third tall tale, um, but also Pirates of the Caribbean, she does have a lot of power in that universe as well, like being able to bring back people from the dead. So opening a portal is not really, especially considering she's not in a human form. She's Calypso is is pretty easy for her. Yeah, like she's associated with bringing people back from the dead, um, opening portals to dead realms, um, also uh, storm, weather, and lightning is all all part of her... Uh, Repertoire? Her tool cut. Yeah, well, yeah, a little box of uh, magic, so to say. Uh, and when you when you see those uh, portals, when you do a tall tale and uh, a portal opens to the Sea of the Damned, you actually see lightning coming from a cloud which to me screams like that's Calypso, right? She she does lightning stuff. So uh, I don't know. It's just magic. That's how she's able to do it. Is it satisfied with that answer? Oh yeah, completely. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, well, I was I was a little confused about it at the first time because I didn't really like, you know, those, you know, Calypso having too much power in this world. But you know, when you dive a little bit into it, it does make sense and. Uh, I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, I mean, um, if you if you're worried about that, there are other characters in Sea of Thieves already who have obviously power that could rival Calypso. Maybe not in her like most complete form or most powerful form, but you look at people like the Pirate Lord who can part the shroud, or um, Flameheart can access the Sea of the Damned on on command by summoning ships and phantoms or what have you, um, or even mm. something like as simple as Old Horatio, who's like 
he's like a minor sort of villain. You'd ex- he's a henchman essentially, but he could part the shroud by just using his his power of of fire, um, as we see in Seabound Soul. Oh yeah, all right. Um, so let's let's stick a little bit to the Calypso topic, just um, because one of my subscribers, Banabel, has a question about it. He uh, he or she asks, I want to hear you t- uh, talk about Calypso. Having a god hanging around, god have implications for the lore. Uh, she could be the explanations for some of the big questions, like did she create the shroud, for example? Uh, so, you, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I'll try my best. So, um, I think the important thing with these sort of crossovers is not to let the. Obviously, we've now got a collision of canon, but um, don't like sort of let the fact that she's powerful in Pirates of the Caribbean influence how her power is in Sea of Thieves. So, um, for instance, bringing in another character to explain uh, something like the Shroud is probably really unlikely, so I don't think she's she's created that. Um, it's not really hinted at um, in the story at all or any of the other Sea of Thieves lore. Um, the Shroud is obviously remaining a mystery for now. We might find out what it is, but having a god hanging around... Um, <laughs> As I sort of just discussed, um, there are characters in Sea of Thieves that are already pretty powerful and probably rival Calypso anyway. Um, it, it's, it's a world filled with magic anyway. Um, like, in if you put Calypso in Pirates of the Caribbean, she's probably the most powerful character in it, but move her to Sea of Thieves and she's on a more level playing ground. So I think she's just going to be confined to this story unless we get more Pirates of the Caribbean stuff in the future. Um, mm. It won't happen for a while because obviously... Um, it must be an absolute nightmare collaborating between two major companies and um, creating storyboards and stuff. So I, I just don't think it's going to happen again. Um, I think she's just going to stay on in her camp um, just forever now, essentially. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. If nothing to add to that, I mean, she's just there for these tall tales. Uh, don't really think too much about it uh, outside the tall tales. And something you have to consider as well. Um, Calypso is obviously in the game because of how much she's tied to Davy Jones in regards to the actual trilogy, well, I say trilogy, that's really disrespectful, in regards to the Pirates of the Caribbean film series. She's only really in it two films um, and she's the sort of paramour for, J- for Davy Jones. She's not, she's a major character but she's not like Jack Sparrow or uh, Will Turner or, or I don't know, or Barbosa. She's still quite a minor character to f- this, <laughs> even though she's quite big in the lore. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I get what you're trying to say. Yeah, she's she's not one of the most recognizable characters. So like, um, she's obviously in the story because of her ties to Davy Jones, and that's obviously um, convenient for the plot. Aye, and that ties into the Tall too. But we'll discuss it when we get there. Um, so let's stick to the first Tall Tale. Um, when we go through the portal, I don't know if you notice it, but there's actually two phases. Like the first phase is you go to the portal, you arrive at the Sea of the Damned. You have this ghost parrot talking to you. You have this ghostly voice talking to you. You see those people in rowboats. And then you go through like another kind of section. And after that, you um, you arrive at the, the island. So why are there two phases to, to get to the initial island? I just think it's theatrics, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of it's obviously leaning on Easter eggs and references to the ride in the films. I haven't been on the ride myself. Um, I haven't been fortunate enough to go to. Disney oh God, it's so cool! It's one of my favorites. It really is. I've, I'm I'm not a big Disney fan, so that's why I've never really been to well to excuse me to Florida. Um, I obviously went to the one in Paris, but I didn't go on Paris the Caribbean. Um, I don't think it was made when I was or in Paris anyway, if it even is there. Excuse my ignorance, but... Um... No, it is there. I went to Paris. Oh, I mean, okay. I'm, I'm from Europe, yeah, well... I went to Paris. And it's, it's, I've, I've seen videos about the uh, American uh, Sea of Thieves... Oh, sorry, I said Sea of Thieves, right? Oh, my God, wouldn't that be something? Uh, to the American Pirates of the Caribbean, right? And it's it's pretty similar. Like, they use the same animatronics, it's the same story, it's the same atmosphere. I'm right um, in saying, so, so yeah, it's very similar. But I'm right in saying the parrot is, I know it is in the film as well. Um, and isn't that at the start of the ride? Oh, I didn't, oh, I, I can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember, no. That's fair enough. I know the, the, the rowboats of the people of the damned are from the third Pirates of the Caribbean film. So yeah, I just think um, there's two phases just for theatrics, really. Because yeah. when you come out the portal and we can control our ship, it's basically just straight sailing to the island, isn't it? 
Indeed, it's just a section where where you know the game takes over your ship to 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 lay on the atmosphere, and after that you're in control again. So uh, that's how I read mm. it too. Uh, which does make me wonder, like, how big is the Sea of the Damned? Because we've seen a portion of it, and it's a pretty big portion. Like the feeling I get, even if you you know, especially when you experience all the tall tales, you're like, whoa, this this Sea of the Damned might even be bigger than the Sea of Thieves. So uh, how big is it? Do you think? It's always really hard to tell with something like this, especially when we don't have any answers from Mike Chapman himself. But mm-hmm. Calypso sort of hints that the Sea of the Damned varies depending on um, what your your life was like. It's based off of your fears and memories. So, um, to not spoil too much, but in Tall Tale 3, um, we obviously go through Jack's memories and life um, to yeah. find him because he's stuck in the Sea of the Damned. Whereas, for some reason... Um, we end up in Sailor's Grave and the first tall tale, which has really nothing to do with Jack, it's someone else's memories. Um, but considering that, um, there must be infinite possibilities, and your Sea of the Damned is probably different to my Sea of the Damned, yeah. or at least, or at least the place you're put in when you're in purgatory. Yeah, maybe Calypso just you know put us in this section of the Sea of the Damned because that was where the ferryman was close to. Uh, I don't know, maybe, or it was the best location to uh, to sneak aboard on the fa- the f- uh, ship of the ferryman because that was the entire goal of the talk. That's true. Where we we wouldn't be able to break him out if we went there through dying because we just remember waking up on the ferry and being released. And yep. if we went to our own version of the Sea of the Damned again, that's the same thing. So we needed to enter as living mortals to stow away on the ferry, so to speak. Aye, indeed, and there's another reason for it as well, and that's to get the. Uh, uh, the green flame as a, as a mortal is that correct do 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 you agree with my assessment of that yeah um obviously we need the green flame to save him um but i suppose yeah i suppose we can't get that from the ferry from dying ourselves can we we can no. only get the is it six flames of fate yeah i think yes. so yeah so that sort of pale green is like a turquoise isn't it um we can't get that otherwise yeah. What what is the name of the flame, by the way? Do you remember? Is it the flame of souls? Could be the flame of souls. It makes sense because you do when you use it, you do see the souls of people who who were there before you. So mm. let's uh, let's keep it at that. It's better than the flame or the damned or the, the the flame of fate because that that isn't it. So let's keep it at the uh, the the flame of souls for now. So yeah, let's go go chronologically again. Uh, we arrive at the island, uh, and uh, the first thing we go to is the dead man's grotto, uh, and we hear a voice in the background saying, uh, dead men tell no tales. So who voice are we hearing? Who is that? That's, uh, that, to me, sounds exactly like the ride, like the audio was ripped from the ride itself. Um, and I think, you know, obviously it's... It's setting the tone and it's theatrics, isn't it? Um, I don't yeah. think that's anything that pertains to the law, so to speak. Yeah, not really. It's just it's just your introduction to the Sea of the Damned and this new area. Uh, when you use the uh, the Flame of Souls, uh, you do see a little story unfold when you progress through the story. It's a really cool story, uh, actually. It's really simple. It's just about a bunch of pirates who got some treasure. And the further you progress, the more people get betrayed. And at the end, it's just a captain, uh, and he shoots his uh, uh, surviving members, his last surviving members. <clears throat> the souls fade away, and you see him sitting there as a skeleton uh, uh, on the on the big pile of gold. Is there any more significance to this? Because to me, this is just a neat little story to begin the tall tale. Um, I know the pile of gold is a reference to the ride. Uh, it's one of the fixtures on that. Um, I think it's meant to represent that, basically. Um, he does say something around, um, like, that dead men will always have a place to tell a tale or something like that. Yes. I can't remember the quote. And I think it's just to say, like, um, you know, by committing this um, <laughs> this murder-suicide, as dark as that is, um, <laughs> all the pirates become, um, they go to the afterlife and they can tell their story similar to, like, um, as you see later on in that tavern. Yeah. Yeah. And also, obviously, Jack too, right? Because Jack is a dead person. And he has some tales to tell us. So I don't know. I, I read it kind of like that. Um, obviously, there's a lot of you know a lot of things you can tie it in. Mm. Um, and it's just it's just a neat story to to begin this adventure. I really liked it. 
Yeah, um, I really like. I really enjoyed that bit. Um, I think as as easy it, as it was, and it did feel like a ride. It's a very enjoyable piece of the tall tale. I well, it's just interesting because I had one comment on my. I think it was my review, and he said he was complaining that it felt that uh, it felt like a walking simulator. So, how do you feel about that? Um, like respectfully, obviously, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but um, but you're wrong. I... <laughs> no, no, no. He's he's not wrong. It is a walking simulator, yeah. but mm -hmm. um, I think this is going to sound really pretentious, but um, I guess as you sort of. I don't know. It's really, I'm really trying to step on eggshells here and not um, <laughs> offend anyone. But the just because it's a walking simulator and it's got some simple puzzles doesn't take away from the fact that that's what it's meant to be. It's meant to be like um, a feast for the senses. It's not mm. meant to be like a oh, really tough puzzle or a great combat section, as we see later on in the in the story. It's literally just um, this is the start of a ride. And this is fan service, and it's meant to be really atmospheric. Nothing more, nothing less. Yep, indeed, indeed. It's the it's the sense of adventure. It's the, it's the atmosphere. Um, it you know that's that's the entire point. So yeah, it's it's a love letter to people who like the ride for this. And obviously, um, I think there's a generation gap between people who love the films and people who've gone on the ride. Especially considering the ride's been around for ages. Mm. Um, it's sort of that you can tell throughout these tall tales they're catering to both crowds. Yeah, yeah, and I said in my review too. Like, I actually prefer the uh, the reference to the right over the references to Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so, Tall Tale Three was an absolute blast for me. I really enjoyed that one. All right. So, after the Dead Man's Grotto, we arrive in Sailor's Grave. Uh, what is Sailor's Grave? What is this place? So, going back to what Calypso said about the Sea of the Damned being people's own like little pocket hells i guess or purgatories um it seems to be the cursed captain's version of um the sea of the damned um and he does speak of it as his fallen kingdom um and he sort of locked it away from the rest of the world by snuffing out the light the lighthouse flame um so anyone that gets trapped there um can't get away so ideally no one can come and steal his treasure unless they yeah. go through him um, and they snuffed out the lighthouse keeper as well. I don't know what exactly that means, because um, he can't kill someone that's already dead. So he obviously has some sort of understanding of how to lock people away from not only the Sea of the Damned, but a sort of level underneath where they can't do anything, like killing them twice, to, to, uh, killing them twice almost. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. But he did summon people to to raise a bridge to the lighthouse, right? Yeah, that's true. I suppose that's his crew, though, or his his subjects. Yeah. So why didn't this subject just decide to light the light the beacon to the lighthouse? Hmm. Maybe no uh, access to the soul of the flame of souls or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's you know that's a good point actually. I think that might be it. Yeah, because you can unlit a flame, but if you don't have a, a candle, you can't light it again. So uh, that that makes sense. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. That's, I'm satisfied with that answer. One of uh, the Discord members, Kalistaki, uh, asks us, uh, who the hell is a cursed captain anyways? So who is a cursed captain? What is, what is his little backstory? So he's a cursed captain, um, a skeleton cursed captain, who um, was cursed by his treasure. Um, and for unknown means, he managed to get to the Sea of the Damned. He killed the lighthouse keeper, snuffed up the flame, so no one could come and steal his treasure or leave his own little pocket purgatory of Sailor's Grave. Um, and then he was mutinied. Um, it seems like his head was cut off um, and placed in the cage by his crew. Um, but he's obviously cursed differently because his crew become ghosts, so they must be dead. And he is stuck in his bony body. Um, there's implications in the later tall tale through like symbolism um, that I, I'm, I'm okay to just go ahead and spoil it. Yeah, go for it. Um, in the in tall tale four, if you open the dead man's chest um, at the well, towards the end after the big law reveal, uh, there's a note from the captain there, um, and I didn't actually spot this. Um, Blubber did um, when we played for it again. <laughs> Because um, I, <laughs> it's funny. I was showing him the note, and he said, "Did you notice the symbol in the top right-hand corner?" Um, and that matches sort of the cursed captain's hat and his sails. Like it's a very similar symbol. It's not exactly the same, 
So it could be that he's the captain, and the captain is the person who used to be the captain of the Burning Blade, Flameheart ship, and curse Flameheart Jr., Flameheart's son. Yep, indeed. And if you want to experience that story for yourself, you can read the, the Tales of the Sea of Thieves, I think. That's the one, yeah. The first half that will explain all that. Yes, indeed. So it's not confirmed that it's the same captain, but, you know, could very well be. Um, which is a bit weird because the cursed captain, you know, he seems like a nice bloke, right? Yeah, um, I don't think it's going to be him. I think that's a bit of a red herring. Yeah. Um, especially considering, like, Surely there would be more hints to that other than a symbol. And you pointed out as well that the um, there's two feathers on the opposite side of the hat. And um, yeah, the stamp is one big feather. Yeah, he calls himself the cursed captain. Um, and in the note, it's just signed as captain dot dot dot. So he's obviously got a name. He's I don't think it's the same people, but it could be. Yeah. And maybe we'll we'll meet up with another character in the Sea of Thieves who does have a big feather on his head. And hey, like. I, I know who you are. I have a good inkling who you are. So we'll just have to wait and see for that. Uh, if he's not the captain, which is probably the case, he's just he's just a cursed captain. Um, the way again, the way I read it was that he he stole the treasure while it was still uh, of flesh, uh, and he got lost on his way um, to an outpost and accidentally sailed into the uh, Sea of the Damned. I don't know how. Uh, it's not really that, you know, really that clear cut when you read the journals. Uh, and slowly he was transforming into a skeleton and became cursed and got trapped on the Sea of the Damned. Well, he trapped himself because he didn't want uh, the ferryman or anybody else to steal his treasure. That's an important point to raise as well that you just reminded me of. Um, that he um, he seemed to value like the pirate's life. Um, and the Dark Brethren want to sever the sort of eternity of the Sea of Thieves. Mm -hmm. Also, from what you can tell from um, like the captain himself, he values that based on like some of the hints in the novel. Um, so mm, <laughs> it seems to be conflicting evidence here. Mm, yeah, um, and also again, like he's 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 a pretty nice dude. Like he wants to help you out. He's a, he's really funny as well. Um, but uh, but all the other skeletons we meet, they are they are evil and they get detached from their, uh, you know, their their the person who they were. Right, the longer you are a skeleton, or the longer you are a skeleton lord, the less uh, of your own personality gets uh, stuck with you. Take for example the Gold Order. I think he doesn't even remember what person he used to be, uh, because he's just a Gold Order now. Uh, we see it with Briggsby as well. Briggsby used to be this adventurous pirate, but now she's turning into some sort of evil villain, uh, even though she didn't really uh, ask for it. Um, so why why is the cursed captain still so nice? Like why he why is he still such a big personality? How can he hold on to his former self so much? I don't, I don't know. He's obviously a skeleton lord. You don't have to be massive to be a skeleton lord because we know mm -hmm. Wanda, a skeleton lord, she's normal sized. Um, or the warsmith as she is now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know with Briggsy. So with her, she's not necessarily an evil character. She's more tragic. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. she yeah, still sort of breath. she sort of retains a lot of that sort of tragic nature of her adventure. Um, but she's obviously lost a part of herself. Whereas you look at someone like Grey Marrow, he's still Grey Marrow, and he's just as sort of lucid as he was when he was a human. Um, but it seems like his curse has accentuated his sort of evil streak. Um, and obviously, like you said, with the gold hoarder, um, his sort of mind is, I think because he's so obsessed with the gold, his mind has been corroded, um, which is quite ironic, actually, because gold never corrodes. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, and he's basically become a, a bumbling idiot that can really only say a few words. Um, because yeah. his brain's been rotted by the his obsession. Um, I don't know. Like it, it seems to affect everyone differently. Like Flameheart was more aggressive when he became a skeleton lord. That's um, also true. And obviously, we get a, apparently he was obsessed with killing. Um, even though we've never seen him kill anyone, uh, he's trapped a few people in a box, but that's about it. But um, yeah, it just seems to affect everyone differently. And with the curse captain, and you see Dougie as well, who's um. <laughs> <laughs> he's not an evil guy, but he's still no, like really. 
he still seems to be a skeleton lord, or at least a skeleton captain. Um, and he's <laughs> he's obviously wallowing in his abject woe, isn't he? Yeah. Is is that maybe because I was thinking maybe it's because they are at the Sea of the Damned where their souls are there as well, so they don't get separated from their soul. I mean, that's just just an idea I had. Yeah, that sh- that could be it. Um, we know some characters have been sealed in their remain their remains, um, and their souls may be separate from their sort of ske- skeletal remains. Um, so that's quite a possible thing that's going on with Flameheart at the moment. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's just, just speculation on our part. Mm. Um, Curse Captain, he, he is what he is. Um, I think that's safe to... Uh, uh, that's a safe answer for now, I feel like. I hope they bring him back, because um, I think he'd be a fantastic sort of mainstay in the story. Like, oh, like, definitely. like Duke or Merrick definitely. or someone like that. Yep, 100%. I, I would like to see him in a trailer, too. Um, we come to the next question from uh, Big Shungus 4. Um, he asks us, why do you think there is a Guybrush ship at Seda's grave, which is actually called the Headless Monkey uh, in the game, I think. Like, So why is there a ship? Why is that ship there? Um, outright, I think the developers just really like um, like the game. What is it? Um, Monkey Island. Monkey Island, yeah. Um, I think they're just big fans of it, and they've been wanting to put an Easter egg in for a while, and this was the perfect excuse. Yep, indeed. Like, there's, there's a bunch of Easter eggs in, in Sea of Thieves, and most of them, they point to you know, past Rare games. I, I love those Easter eggs, um, obviously, since I'm a Rare fan. But, you know, there are other pilot games as well. Uh, I don't think it's a hint to a uh, Monkey Island crossover or anything like that. Um, I, I don't think we will see any more crossovers. Could be, but I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, Paris of Caribbean is going to be the main one and nothing else. But hey, maybe we'll have more hints to to other Pirates games, and and this is one of them, um, which was actually really fun to find. So let's continue the story a bit um, after we lit the uh, the lighthouse. Why does the ferryman rescue those uh, other souls? We're trying to stay away from um, <laughs> from speculation here, but a lot of Sea of Thieves lore is speculation. It's done deliberately, yeah. but. Um... From what most people can gather, or at least um, as far as I can tell, that he took his oath to become the ferryman um, out of choice, as we see in the uh, seventh tall tale for the Shores mm-hmm. of Gold um, in Fate of the Morning Star. And I think it's to do with defeating Flameheart all those years ago, the first time he's defeated. Um, if he could control who comes back from the dead, Flameheart could never really defeat the good guys. And I think that's why. He saves people, um, but he doesn't say always save everyone. Um, I think it's hinted that that depending on how bad you are, you stay in the sea of the down for longer, but you just don't remember it. Yeah, or you remember parts of it, right? But not the entire story. Yeah. So, and he he tells he tells those uh, souls as well, like, oh, you've been here for a long time. Your time has served. Uh, you can finally return now. And he probably won't remember all that much of this, but he also hints that. He hopes he kind of does, but that they kind of do remember, so they don't, you know, uh, stray away from the pirates' uh, way of life too mm-hmm. far. Pretty, pretty simple, actually. Yeah. Um, I love the bit when you're rowing behind it and you see the ghosts like sort of um, float across the water onto the ship uh, that are following the wraith. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So I, it, I just thought I'd add that on. <laughs> no, it's really cool because. Thanks to these tall tales, we finally see the ferryman doing other stuff than just steering a ship and without spoiling too much. Well, I guess we, we are gonna do uh eventually, but you know, he does he does do some interesting stuff which uh, which I really like. Like flesh out the character, I, I really like that. Um so we're on a ship and uh he says, Oh, don't explode the uh don't use the uh, uh the flame to explode the roster, but of course we need to do that to progress the story, so we do. Um so why does it explode? Like that's a bit unclear to me, if I'm being honest. Uh, obviously, it seems to me like it's a gameplay thing, but um, I think there's a reason why the flame of is it flame of souls we called out. Sorry, guys, really bad with this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's not meant to go into that um, that brazier. Is it brazier? Brazier is a bra, isn't it? Brazier, whatever. The, the the bit where we get the flame of fate from. I don't think the soul of the flame of souls is meant to go on there. That's what causes it to explode. Yeah, that's the. I mean, you don't really have a you know physical explanation for that. It's just it's just a gameplay thing. 
uh, it needs to explode and, and we have this flame. So that's the reason why. Um, if, if there's a better explanation, please please let me know. I would love to know this, uh, this answer. Um, so yeah, when, when we're in his hole, uh, obviously we're there to rescue Jack, but we do see a lot of other souls trapped there as well. Uh, they're, they're grabbing with their hands and stuff like that. So any, any hints to those, who those other souls could be? I guess it's people like, if you're in the brig of the Fairy of the Damned, you're there forever from what I can tell. That's what his plans were with Jack. Um, I guess they're just people that he doesn't plan on saving. Yep, all those toxic pirates. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Joni decided, like, ah, oh, yeah, I know, you're too toxic, you, you stay in the ferryman's hall. Yeah, if you, uh, if you sink people doing the second tall tail while they're underneath, that's where you go, all the way down to the bottom, to the brick of the ferryman. Aye, <laughs> uh, indeed. Uh, we don't see any faces, so obviously it's meant for atmosphere, but it's nice to know that... Uh, that the ferryman does keep people there, like he does. Not everybody get, gets a pass. Um, even a dog, like there's probably a dog that has been really nasty because he does have a guard dog over there. Uh, do you think the ferryman spends some ancient coins to uh, to buy that one? I reckon because he's a Sea of Thieves partner, the rare just just gives him the ancient <laughs> coins each month. He, he's been saving them up for the Pirates of the Caribbean crossover, and he bought the the prison dog especially. Uh, indeed. Obviously, it's a reference to the first movie and, and the ride. Um, but after that, after we got the key from the dog, the dog kind of disappears, I believe, and we don't really see him uh, back again. Um, that's correct, right? Yeah, he ended up in my um, my pet chest, so I don't know how that <laughs> happened. <laughs> uh, it's a good dog, by the way. If it didn't have uh, had so many pets, I might have bought it. It's a, it's a good one. And, uh, and then we meet Jack, and uh, Jack is a ghost. So how did Jack die? He got killed by the sirens. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. The Pearl got attacked. Um, the other crew members got captured, and he died defending the Pearl. Um, and that's how he ended up in the Sea of the Damned. I, and it, it wasn't David Jones that sunk the Pearl initially because of their chase. Yeah, it's hinted at that the Davy Jones caught up to the Pearl, sunk it, and then the sirens dragged it under. Um, and oh no, no, the sirens didn't kill him. It was the ocean crawlers. I think they, the ocean crawlers, killed him, and then the sirens dragged the pearl down to the bottom of the sea. Aye, all right, yeah, it seems uh, seems clear. It doesn't really that matter that much. It was it was because of intervention of the sirens that they that he died? So yeah. There we go. Um. So how did Davy Jones get to the sea of the dam then? Because he's not he's not really dead, right? So how how did he appear there? So um, I guess he, like you said, he might have another version of the um, mm -hmm. the lockbox. Uh, uh, they should have given it a proper name because I, I have no idea what it is. Greatest fire treasure of all time. Uh, it's yeah, <laughs> it's the it's yeah I know it's the box and indeed like the box is in it to sell to different horizons and different world worlds and the sea of the damned is just another world, just like the sea of thieves is another world, uh, and you can use the box to sell to. To another horizon, and that's how uh, Dave Jones got there. In the note um, from the captain, it does say that um, the captain sent the a trinket to Davy Jones, so it could be another one of the boxes, or it could be something else that's allowing him to travel between the worlds. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel pretty confident there are two two boxes of the same, but uh, but yeah, again, if we're wrong, we'll hear it in the comments. Mm. Um. Now, why are there ocean crawlers? Because they will—they are fighting you on the on the sea of the damned. How how did the ocean crawlers get there? So, in the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, or Salazar's Revenge, if you're from Europe, um, the all the pirate all, all the curses of the sea are broken when the trident of Poseidon's destroyed. Um, so, Will Turner and the crew of the Dutchman are freed from service. Um, but because the Dutchman always needs a captain, obviously the next in line was Davy Jones, so he was brought back from the dead or the locker, um, and he needed a crew. So um, from what I can tell, his alliance with the Sirens, um, or possibly the Trinket, I'm not really sure, um, that's hinted that in Tall Tale 4, uh, the Gold Hoarder, spoilers by the way, um, <laughs> has a Siren gem that seems to be creating um, Ocean Crawlers. Essentially, um, he's created a crew from um, either Lost Souls at Sea um, to basically crew a ship. 
Yeah, it is. It is because of his alliance with the Siren Queen that he he's able to have uh, Ocean Crawlers fight for him. Um, and the specifics we can we can debate debate the specifics, but basically that's the reason. Hang on, um, she obviously did it as a trade, didn't she? Because he can call the Kraken for her or for them. So I guess she just provided him with Ocean Crawlers. Yeah, that's there's more to it, right? Didn't the science like? Like that, um, the ships get sunk, and that they can uh, use their wreckage, and uh, you know, like like use those dead pirates to make more ocean crawlers. I guess, yeah. It seems to be like a not only like a alliance of convenience, but there seems to be mutual benefits for both parties in that in that alliance. I it's just it's just waiting for a alliance to get betrayed, <laughs> if you ask me. But oh well, uh, that's about. Everything I kind of want to mention. Um, oh yeah, uh, no, no, one more thing that's not in the notes. Like the ferryman throws his sword to to Jack, uh, and Jack uses a dead man sword for a dead man. Uh, don't know if that has any specific, you know, if that means anything else. I guess um, he would be the only one that can wield it because he's dead, isn't he? Yeah, and that's about it. So, anything else you want to mention about the uh, first all tale? No, um, it was pretty much covered at all, I think. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Um, no, that's it. All right, cool. So let's continue to the second tall tale. Uh, and I believe you are willing to do the summary of that one. Yeah, so my rate's just gone up because of that. So that's an extra 50 quid for less. Um, <laughs> you're making me do more work than was promised. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll cover this one. Um, so, yeah, can I take it away? Go go for it. Okay, so the second tall tale was the Sunken Pearl. Uh, so we go and see Calypso again at the Castaway's Hut. Um, she gives us some exposition of um, what we need to do. Um, essentially, we need to sail west of Old Souls Atoll, where Duke was actually before. Um, and we need to get Jack, or we need to get Jack's compass so we can find Jack uh, in the Sea of the Damned. Um, we sail all the way west to a giant blue beacon, um, as if the map wasn't wasn't clear enough already. They put a massive blue beacon for it. <laughs> it's for new players. <laughs> but yeah, for the new players, you can't tell north, east, south and west like me. Um and we get to the beacon, we see a bit of um, debris at the top of the water. Um, if you're lucky, there'll be another ship there that you can sink. Um, and then you can sw we swim down, uh, we get this beautiful rendition of Who Shall Not Be Returning, um, but a siren version, so listen carefully to the lyrics for that one. Um, we dive down, 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 it takes us a good few minutes, um, and then we get this beautiful reveal of the Black Pearl who's been chained to the bottom of the, the sea floor here. Um, go inside the pearl to get the compass. Oh, sorry, we go inside the pearl to get the key to the captain's cabin. We get the compass, and the compass starts pointing inside the citadel. And we hear this voice basically telling us that we have to rescue the rest of the crew of the Black Pearl. We go in, um, we do a few puzzles, fight some ocean crawlers, find out that oh no, the person who's in charge here is a siren queen. Um, she tells us to surrender to her royal guard. We swim out, have a really cool fight with the sirens uh, while using their tridents against them. Swim to the opposite structure, which is the true citadel. Open the door. Um, carry on with some puzzles where we have to attack some mermaid statues to raise and lower the water level. Um, at this point, you probably glitch out because another crew's there, so you have to start again. <laughs> so we get back, um, and then we get into the final room with the puzzle that you have to parkour to get past because it's always broken um basically it's more combat puzzles 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 and then we get to the sort of main set piece which is a giant tower with a ship on it and the ship's chained to the ceiling um and we get on the ship and it turns out that it's the silver blade and for those of you who don't know the silver blade is flameheart jr flameheart's son's ship um uh we end up using the anger to raise it to the top of the tower. We fight some ocean crawlers on the way up. And finally, the Siren Queen's had enough of us, and she sends the Kraken, her quote-unquote daughter, to kill us. Um, we shoot the invisible Kraken. Um, <laughs> it wasn't invisible for me, but it was for my girlfriend. Um, and for gets, me. And, and for you in our last playthrough. Um, 
it backs off, we injure it, um, and then we continue our ascent. Um, also, there's a chest of sorrows in the brig. I forgot to, oh, sorry, not in the brig, in the captain's cabin. Uh, if you found the key in the glitched room and managed to get there, um, we get this chest of everlasting sorrows. And the chest of everlasting sorrows is a chest of sorrows that cries forever. Um, so we take that with us. And before we get to the Queen's Chamber, there's a sort of a little door that when we put the chest there, uh, it opens it to reveal the remains of the Siren King, um, his final resting place after he was exhumed by the crew of the Silver Blade. That's how the ship got there. Um, we go into the Queen's Chamber. She basically reveals that um, she's angry at us for killing the King, even though that was nothing to do with us. Uh, we fight the Queen. She sort of disappears. And then we find the crew of the Black Pearl who had been turned into mermaid statues. We break them out, give them a compass, and they go off to go and see Calypso, and we're free to leave with our new treasure. All right. Yep, that's that's about it. Right, pretty you. long-winded explanation there, but, you know, you know, I, I like to hit all the key points. Yeah, I get it. And I, I, I can definitely tell that when you're talking about a certain section, like, ah, oh, shit, I need to mention that too. I need to mention that too. Ah, oh, that's part of the story as well. Uh, but you did a good job. It's it's what you get when you get a lore enthusiast to, to do the summary. Um, I also I also ignored um, the instructions laid out for me here, so there's that as well. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it was really condensed, but that's fine. That's all fine. I did like your mention of of Duke. Like that Duke is actually pretty close to where the um, the Black Pearl sunk. I didn't even uh, caught on to that, but. Uh, but that's true because everybody's on the Duke videos, right? About all the runes and what is Duke, uh, what's happening with Duke, and what is he hinting towards. And when he was become... talking about this poor crew that that went to the uh, ocean floor, hey, he's, he's probably talking about uh, the Black Pearl, right? Uh, could be the Silver Blade crew as well. I mean, Silver Blade, oh yeah, that's true. Could be the Silver Blade too. That that would make a lot of a uh, lot of sense as well because both the. Um, the the silver blade and the black pearl kind of sunk in the same uh, same area. That's, that's that's correct. I like how you forgot about Duke, and when we went there the first time, you deliberately shot over to see if Duke was still there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I I even posted in my Discord. Have, has anybody seen Duke? I was like, oh, I might need to make a new video about it. Uh, but Duke is somewhere else. He's definitely somewhere else. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, probably the next episode. Um, so to keep it focused on the, on the second tall tale, uh, let's take it from the beginning. How did the Black Pearl sink? So I think we answered this slightly in the last section, but it seems mm. like it was sunk by the Flying Dutchman, and then the sirens dragged it down to the bottom of the sea to take it apart for parts, essentially. In, indeed. Um, why do they want the parts? Like, I asked you that before, but like they have all these structures built out of coral and shells and stuff like that. So why did they need wreckage from ships? So Shelley Preston outright said in the oh. showcase that they use it to prop up their structures. So they they rip it apart and take the parts out and use it to support their um, their oh. citadels. Um, I I guess you see elements of that in um, obviously this tall tale and the fourth tall tale. But uh, as the fifth far one, as you mean. Oh, and the fourth, oh, and, and, and the yeah. and the fifth. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that's just pretty much it. I think she just literally told us straight up. All right. Yeah. I, I guess coral kind of grows slowly, so they need they need some extra building materials. Um, but the sirens they were not here before. They were sleeping. Um, you, you get in the tall tale. They were awakened by by someone. So who awakened the, the sirens? I, I'm going to reference uh, the law master himself, Captain Falco, because I watched his latest video on it, and right. he said something that I didn't really pick up on, and it was um, the chest of sorrow. Um, basically, the Silver Blade crew found the chest of sorrow and the bones of um, of the Siren King in a vault, and they were chased by skeletons into the open ocean, um, and the chest of sorrow was emitting a song, and they so happens to be above the citadel, and the queen had the song to send the sirens to retrieve what she thought was a siren king, because he's been missing for a few thousand years. Um, turns out it was just the, the chest that was making this song, um, so they attacked the silver blade and sunk it. Um, but the song of the chest itself mistakenly woke up the sirens. Oh, that's a pretty good catch, and it does make a lot of sense. 
So it is actually the uh, what is the second crew of the Silver Blade that is responsible for the awakening of the sirens. Yeah, so it's, uh, we only know we only know the name of one of them, and that's Dimitri, the captain. Um, yep. And uh, Falcor said as well that um, the the chest itself was created by the husband, or he implanted the song on there because obviously the sorrow is death, something like that. Um, All right. Uh, and obviously replicating that made them think, "Oh, the king's back," but it wasn't the king. Aye, and the chest of sorrow is obviously modeled after the Siren King too, right? Yeah, well, you see his image in a lot of the um, the structures and doors, um, and you look yeah. at the face, and it's very, very similar. I like first. I told you this first. I thought it was like a depiction of Poseidon or something like that, but it is actually the, the depiction of the Siren King. What, what I find conflicting with that is is that um, Ramsey actually created the cursed chests in the Athena's Fortune novel. Um, he created the chest of sorrow and the chest of a thousand grogs. So that's a really weird sort of um mm. m- maybe um obviously because the ancients knew the magic of it maybe he's learned that i don't know i think that's a bit of a um what's the word plot hole there yeah well i think he's well he doesn't have monopoly on on curses uh that's how i read it um like yeah he he's responsible for a lot of curse chats but you know people were making curse chats before that too right like the the curses, like the Ashen curse and the, the Gold curse, those were all curses that were there before uh, Ramsey even uh, sailed to the Sea of Thieves. Or maybe the fact that um, his versions don't cry forever, that he's sort of made an imitation of it, like a oh, synthetic yeah. version. Yeah, that does make sense. And in the beginning, like before Sea of Thieves even came out, people were talking about skeleton keys. Um, and and skeleton keys are not really a thing anymore in the, well, in the Tall Tales they are. But skeleton keys were originally the only keys that could open every chest. Like all the chests were made from the change of the the old mother, yeah. and that that's been thrown out the, the the lore a little bit too now as well, because you can't like all those different chests that belong to different people. Like they they can't all be made from the chains of the old mother. That doesn't make sense. No, it's um. It, I think it was something that was thought about when the game was still young and has been thrown out with, as gameplay, so taking precedent over lore. Yeah, indeed. So don't don't think too much of it. <laughs> um, so why do the sirens hate the pirates? Do you know that? Um, so it seems like the sirens don't hate pirates, so to speak. It's um, I keep saying that. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> they don't hate the pirates. They hate humans. Um, and if you read the murals of the Siren King's uh, is, is tomb, I guess you'd call it, um, the King of the Ancients actually betrayed them and killed the Siren King. We don't know why that happened. Um, and it's hinted that when he was killed, he was still like a mermaid. Um, the Sirens and the Mermaids aren't different things. Um, they mutate through some sort of plague or curse. Um, so it's very, very likely that the Siren King and Queen were the Mermaid King and Queen before. Um, but we don't know why the humans did it. And so she thinks that us pirates, who are sort of different generation, are the ones who killed her king because she's been asleep for thousands of years. Yeah, it's just a, a very long grudge. We can uh, we can say that because the ancients did it and she holds us responsible just because we're also human. I mean, I suppose if someone killed your lover and you went to sleep for a thousand years and then people who look exactly like the people who killed your lover, you'd still be pretty angry and you probably wouldn't understand that they're different people. Yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd just be happy to be single again. I don't know. That's me. <laughs> she's uh, <laughs> she's going to have to go on, um, what's that program called? Is it the um, most eligible bachelor or something like that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, well, she's going on the siren version of Love Island for the UK viewers. <laughs> do, do you love sinking people? Oh, it's a great match. Um, so, Sorry. so yeah. So when we dive down and we you see the pearl, we also see some cracks next to the pearl, like drag tracks, like somebody something has been dragged there. Uh, why are there tracks next to the pearl? Uh, the silver blade was obviously dragged in, um, but we don't know how many other ships that this has happened to. It seems like the silver blade has made a lot of the structures, um, but if you go through the tall tale itself and through other tall tales, it looks like this has happened to multiple ships. Yeah, so those stacks are not from the uh, Pearl, but from the ships that came before, right? 
That's correct, yeah. All right. Uh, next question. How are we able to, to hear the Siren Queen? Queen? Because when we read the, read the novel, <clears throat> you needed to put in earrings to hear the singing of the, the mermaids. But doesn't the same apply to the sirens? Like, how, how are we able to hear the Siren Queen? So maybe when the sirens, sorry, the mermaids um, song transform, so transformed into a sorrowful one, um, maybe that's humans can only hear that version because uh, the song is now different. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, I think maybe it's a gameplay thing uh, because it's kind of weird maybe to find earrings or something like that. I don't know. Uh, or or maybe the queen has the power to, to talk to humans. I don't know. Possibly she might just she she might just speak English. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do I do kind of like it because you know you, well, obviously everybody knows you know the mythology of of sirens like they they sing their songs and they lure people to the cliffs and then blah, they they feast on their bodies and whatever. Um, and the sign queen kind of does it too, right? She she lures people in like, oh, you need to you need to help this crew of the Black Pearl. Like they really need your help. And like, ha ha, fooled you. You're gonna die. So that's this very silent thing to do. That so from story story point, I really like uh, that they did that. Yeah, and the, the voice acting for the Siren Queen was phenomenal. Honestly, mm. she was probably one of the best um, voice actors on there. Um, yeah, definitely for a minor character, and um, a lot better than some other people who. Um, Yes, yes. Who, who did voice acting for this? I uh, indeed. There's only there's only one that sticks out who is objectively bad, uh, but overall, like the voice acting in these Tall Tales is ooh, is really good. It's it's amazing. Like definitely up there, best voice acting in video games. <clears throat> so uh, I've got some questions about all the all these statues, right? So all, are the siren sirens responsible for all those mermaid statues we see in the seas? I guess so, because at the end of the tall tale, we see the crew of the Black Pearl turn into these statues, and they're exactly the same as the ones we find out. Um, we find out in the world. So, um, but also you have to remember as well that the gems themselves are slightly different to the Siren gems, mm -hmm. they're like a more refined version. So maybe that happens over time. Yeah. So like, the longer you're a statue, the more pure the gem's going to be. Um, but it seems like people's essences are trapped in those gems. Yeah, so there, there, there's some difference in the gems indeed because we have mermaid gems, which mermaids are the good guys, or merfolk are the good guys, so why are they called mermaid gems in those statues? It's a bit weird. And then we have the siren gems that kind of look like uh, more like a heart, and those are found in sirens, but also uh, ocean crawlers. Uh, and then we have Siren Hearts, which are well, it's basically also looks like a gem, but also more like more even more like a heart. So is that a progression, or are they all different, or are they variations on the same curves, or what is going on? Uh, at this point, I have no idea because it's very confusing, and it's, I think it's a bit conflicting at this point in regards to mermaids and sirens. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, I, I wish we had clear cut answers for these, but we we really don't. We we do know that you know you can get cursed and you 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 can get cursed to turn into an ashen crawler and you know those gems are involved in that too, um, but how it works exactly uh, because some statues that they they radiate a curse uh, and then you smash them open then there's no person inside but there's a gem inside so did that person get transferred in that gem we we don't really we don't really know for for sure right now right no we don't all right. So, uh, so let's go to uh, let's go to the crack and let's 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 take another uh, question from one of my subscribers, uh, Benabel again. Um, how literal? How literal shall we take it that the Siren Queen calls the crack and her daughter? So far, we have been told that crack and stem from old mother, and she is dead. Is the Siren Queen a new old mother? Does she birth new Krakens, or does she just use the term daughter? Because it's her favorite pet kraken. Is she? If she is little, then she has to be a shape shifting kraken slash siren, which seems unlikely. So I know you've got some some thoughts about this, Ray. So you can take this one. Yeah. So that's a really really good question. Um, and again, we don't have a definitive answer. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate that, mate. Um, <laughs> we. So Davy Jones refers to um, the kraken as as 
the siren's daughter and he uses that sort of quotation air quotes um when he speaks about it so as far as he is understood i think he he thinks it's a pet um but when the siren queen talks about the kraken she does sound very literal um she calls it daughter i think in every instance it's brought up um so my sort of take on it is that in the tales from the sea of thieves the crew of the silver blade flameheart junior um they find a chest which can draw the kraken um and they end up sinking with that um and obviously the um the chest is now gone through means unknown um and the fact that it draws the kraken is almost a bit too coincidental that um i know jones can control the kraken or call it um it sounds like the chest has fallen in the hands of the sirens because the mermaids don't want any anything to do with it but the sirens do worship the leviathans of the sea mm-hmm. um so it could be that what's in the chest is the essence of old mother hence why um when old mother was killed and changed to the to kraken's fall all her children um ended up beaching themselves and dying with her apart from one which is the kraken we see in the game so it could be that the chest itself is also emitting the cries of old mother because her soul's trapped inside it um maybe that transformed the siren queen i don't know um but it's it's definitely something to look into. The use of daughter is is mm. is particular, you know. Um, yeah. Sort of the the regal nature of the queen. I think she refer to it as her pet. Um. Just to sort from some uh, just from a power standpoint. So I think she does mean it quite literally. I think there's some sort of old mother law that's yet to be revealed of the Siren Queen. Yeah, it could be. Like, it, it is in the novel for a reason, like The Old Mother, right? So it's definitely going to have some some influence on the overall story going forward. If this is it right now, we, well, that's, that's debatable. But, you know, it certainly is there to, to mean something. Uh, again, the way, the way I see it, it's, you know, you had the old mother with all the daughters and the old mother got chained uh, <clears throat> and she died. It took a very long time. Uh, and, you know, the daughters weren't there anymore. They all died, too. They watched upon Kraken's fall, uh, most of them at least. And um, But one indeed did survive, and I think they, the, the Siren Queen just, you know, kind of adopted it. Uh, maybe, indeed, as a pet. But, you know, like, you know, you, you, you get it when, when some people have dogs, right? And they, they actually say that the dog is part of the family now. I kind of see it with the same with the Siren Queen, right? So she adopted this... this uh, this Kraken, and they have this kind of relationship uh, that they uh, look out for each other. There is something I neglected to bring out, excuse me, I'm looking for the lyrics mm-hmm. now. Um, I don't think anyone's posted them now. Um, but you know when you're diving down, you get that really, really good rendition of who shall not be returning. Yeah, the thing um, you always bring up. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. I, I love that piece of music. Sorry, sorry for having good taste. Um <laughs> The I can't remember the lyrics off the top of my head now, but it sounds like they're talking about um it could be the pearl being chained forever, but it could also be talking about old mother itself. Mm, this be. is probably a topic for another time. Um I didn't I didn't come prepared for this question. Um <laughs> but the lyrics are really particular, um, and it sounds like it could be hinting towards that, but also could just be talking about the ship that's chained to the bottom of the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we, we had some other questions, but I think we answered it. We answered the question about Silver Blade, uh, the Chest of Sorrows that's there. Um, let's see, we, we even answered what's up with the Dead Siren in the Stronghold. I mean, that's the Siren King. Um, so, another question from the subscriber, that's the last one, it's Ewish. Uh, he asks us, what will happen to the Sirens now their King and Queen are gone? Uh, the Queen is still alive, from what I can tell. It seems she just fled uh, from us. Um, it doesn't sound like in Tall Tale 4 that um, Jonas tells us that the Siren Queen's gone. Um, I think she's just sort of... She had to flee because she was going to die. All right. Oh, I thought she... I felt like she she died, actually. I, 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 I don't know, actually, because the Ocean Crows are still looking for Davy Jones and they're still helping him, right? So why why do the Sirens help 
Dave Jones if there's no sign Queen to tell them to help him. Exactly, and Wanda does say, like, is the alliance with the Siren Queen not all it's cracked up to be, to imply that obviously she's still alive. Um, and he obviously still has the domain over the Siren structures, as we see in 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I think she just fled because she was going to die, we were going to kill her. Yeah, that's, that's, that's also that's one thing of the Sea of Thieves style tales I, I kind of don't like. Like, if you kill a boss, like, the same with the gold, right? You, you rip off his head and you turn it in at he. Uh, the Order of Souls, and then, you know, a few titles later, he's back again. Uh, which could have been an explanation, like, somebody could take the skull back and, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, if somebody's dead or dies in Tulta, let, let them be dead. I mean, that's that's how I look at it. And the same with Sign Queen, right? I think she she explodes in some some particles or whatever. Uh, I'd rather have them, you know, made them made, have them made an animation where she's swimming away if they... You know, if the purpose for her is to come back later, she let, let her swim away or something like that. Yeah, I but agree. She, it, it just makes the fate of the characters a bit unclear. Yeah, yeah, which I don't really, I don't really like. But that's that's one of the few real criticisms I have uh, on these tall tales. Yeah, that's fair enough. And of course, the invisible kraken. <laughs> because this second tall tale is the most buggy tall tale there is. Um, the first time we played through it. No problems at all, um, but ever since then, uh, every time we do it, or somebody from our crew does it, uh, th there's always something glitching out in the stall tail. We had to help that guy, didn't we? Um, <laughs> he was he was stuck, and we got up to him, and then we had to like glitch around it just to I, so we could both finish it. I this is we've learned workarounds around the glitches now. See um, I see if glitches. Um. Let's see. I think we've answered all the questions that are that are in the script. Unless you have something else you want to mention, just something I wanted to add that was uh, revealed in one of the Silver Blade journals is that um, the mermaids actually bring back our ships as well. So that's how we get infinite ships. They salvage them. That's how the Silver Blade was salvaged. All right. No thanks. I, I didn't know that answer, so I do know now. All right. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, um, sorry, sorry. Just to add on to that, um, the reason why they didn't salvage it for Flameheart Junior when he sank is because the chest was on board, um, and they didn't want anything to do with it because obviously it was cursed. Um, but once that was removed, um, that's how the silver blade was recovered. They obviously dredged up from the bottom of the sea, and um, that's uh... how the that's how Dimitri and Co found it just floating there. Gotcha. All right, that makes sense. All right, I was wondering about that, so so thanks for adding that. Um. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, that's it for this episode, at least. In the next one, we will probably... Well, at least we'll discuss Talltale 3 and 4. Please remember to join the Discord if you have questions about it. Uh, make sure you let us know. And we are there to help you out. And we make sure we do a research before we uh, we dive in. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job on, the, on this episode. So I hope it helped for the, for the people who are listening that things make a little bit more sense. So... I want to thank a shiny ray for being awesome as a regular guest. Can you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yeah, so you can find me right here on YouTube. Um, I'm if you just type in the top a shiny ray, uh, you'll find my content. I do a lot of law discussions, reviews, and feedback, um, and also a few concepts for updates as well. So um, there's something for everyone. Um, if you like lovers content, you'll like mine. Um, I mean, it's much better, but you know, you be the judge <laughs> of that. It's much, much more frequent. Let's let's give it a that. Um, so yeah, awesome. Check them out. Definitely do it. You won't be disappointed. Give them some likes. Also like this video. I would really appreciate it because podcasts are really hard to make popular on YouTube. But you know, liking this definitely helps. Um, so yeah, that's it. I will see you pirates uh, later. In the meantime, drink some grog, steal some treasure, and as always, take care. Take care, guys. Bye.